Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to the farm show. Today, I'd like to talk to you about something that I feel like is really wrong with what's going on. And it's with the cattle market, it's with what the beef packers have been doing. And I'd like to thank uh, Steve Stratford at Cattle USA TV, um, a YouTube channel. I'm, you may have seen his videos about what's really going on and he's kind of making a call to action about what we need to be doing, or whatever we need to be doing, whatever we can do. Um, watch his Pratt Cattle Chat videos. They're, they'll open your eyes about what about what's going on and what I've seen go on since I started learning about about the cattle feeding business in the early 90s when I started paying attention to what we did. We don't feed fat cattle anymore, but uh, we did then, and it hasn't, I don't think, gotten much better. Another person who I think is really on, the, on top of this issue is uh, Corbett Wall at Cattle Market Summary. Though These are YouTube channels. Um, you need to watch some of what he has to say uh, and share their videos. Get them out there so everyone can see them. It's, it, it's I believe, that important. And one thing that Steve talked about in his video, one of his videos, was the Big Four Packers. Um, I thought I would kind of talk about those Big Four Packers a little bit and tell you who they are and what they do. In the beef industry, there are four major packers. These JBS Holdings, Tyson Foods, Cargill Meat Solutions, and National Beef. JBS Holdings slaughters beef, pork, and poultry. So does Tyson. Cargill Meat Solutions only slaughters beef and poultry and national beef with their paltry 10 per 10 and a half percent as of 2011 market share US market share they slaughter 10.5 percent of the US cattle fed cattle um, that in the 2011 numbers was 75 percent of all the US fed cattle go through those four companies I don't know about pork and chicken what their percentages of are there but I know it's it's very difficult to be a, a pig farmer it's I don't think you could be a commercial pig farmer and make your living from solely from being a pig farmer you can raise a couple and sell them to people around town but it's to do any 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 more than that I don't think is possible anymore um, those four companies, uh, in the 2018 election cycle, the, the top 30 meat packers and processors, those 30 companies in, 28, in the 2018 election cycle, they donated $3.45 million dollars in political donations. Now Steve you talked about Kansas and why none of our politicians were signing up to investigate these Packers. Um, I know Pat Roberts isn't running again but over his political career I've read that he's received somewhere in the realm of three hundred thousand dollars in campaign donations to keep getting elected and uh, paid nineteen thousand dollars for speaking engagements at Packer industry get-togethers so maybe these Kansas politicians are bought and paid for and know where their bread is buttered so they tell us what we want to hear so we vote for them and then they they take care of daddy 
I don't know, but that's kind of what I feel like. JBS Holdings is the largest beef packer in the nation. Fortunately, I guess, they're no longer the largest cattle feeder. The largest cattle feeder is now located in, in uh, New York City, actually, because they bought JBS Holdings Five Rivers feedlot system. So, why is the largest cattle packer also the largest cattle feeder? That it, it worries me that the beef industry is headed towards where the pork industry is now. Um, I didn't use, I, did, I thought it never could. I thought we will always be able to have mama cows out here. And, uh, because you, I didn't, at least I didn't think you could confine a cow like you can confine a sow. Since in the, in the fairly recent past, up to, to about a year or so ago, I held that opinion. Now, I've been watching stuff about people confining cows in deep bedded hoop sheds. That is a seems to me like a really good way to to met to if you don't have grass yourself with a little bit with not too much farm ground you can raise enough feed to keep a decent amount of cows in order to that you I I believe you could make a living on so for the small small producer I think it's a great way to bring back your kids if you wanted to um, if there's room for you and you want to farm for another farm and ranch for another 25 or 30 years but your kids are ready to go I think it's a way that and they want to be here be be where you are being being a producer it's definitely a way to give them a decent quality of life on the other side of the coin though how long until the how long until the the largest cattle feeder also becomes the largest cow producer and then they vertically integrate their production from the birth of the animal the gestation of the animal and in, in the mother in the confined hoop barn and then how long until the packer or the one with that, how long until JBS buys five rivers back um, the people who bought it are a holding company. I mean, who knows how much they want to be in the cattle feeding business. So, and JBS only sold Five Rivers for, I don't know how much they, they, they got out of it, I can't remember. They only sold it because $3 billion dollars of government fines were levied against them in Brazil to because they were in trouble for bribing government officials they're bribing government officials in Brazil where else are they bribing government officials I don't know they got caught in Brazil so what do you guys think um, it's just We need to do something. I don't know. I know the beef packing in the history of the beef packing industry is it's amazing. I've been doing some research uh, to make this video in the 70s and 80s. Over a thousand packers went broke. Now they were probably not efficient. They were outdated. Um, and they didn't have the ability to compete. They, but one thing, large population centers had their own beef packer. There was packers in New York, Chicago, Kansas City, St. Louis. Every every big city had its own meat packing, and hanging meat would go from those packers to 
butchers in grocery stores and whatnot. I think it, I think IBP bought when they started. They start they pioneered boxed beef, and uh, they that's what started the whole the whole process. Boxed beef started shipping. And it was so much easier that the others couldn't really do it. Now the big four in 1900 was Armour, Swift, um, Armour, Swift, Morel, I think Morel. And I cannot remember the third one. But my dad remembers all four of those in when he was young and growing up. And how they were they were here in Southwest Kansas. They were killing beef along with these others opening up. My dad remembers taking fat cattle to the sale where they'd bid on. Um, so things have changed, and I don't think they've changed for the better in this case. The amount of money Packers have been making is crazy that's why you need to you need to look at Steve and Corbett's videos because they they go into a lot more depth and I don't I'm not trying to take away from them you need to go watch them I'll link in the description uh, it's just the cash cattle price is is not where all the commodity prices are not based in my opinion they're not they don't have their base in the actual supply of that particular commodity it's just it's all speculation driven by humongous funds and the actual supply doesn't and my, I doesn't feel like it plays that big of a deal. I don't know what we what we need to do. Um but we need to figure out something. I've you know I've got some ideas, but they're probably not very good and they probably wouldn't work. So anyway, I'll let you guys go. Thank you for watching this episode of the farm show. Be sure to watch those other guys. Thank you for watching mine. Subscribe to their channels. And if you like this, you could subscribe to mine and share this. It's probably not near as good as theirs, but I appreciate it anyway. Have a great day and good luck out there. Bye-bye.